We'll just get right into it. Uh, the ACC tournament, March 8th through the 12th at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York. 15 teams will compete. Duke, Miami, North Carolina, and Notre Dame get double buys. The defending champ is Georgia Tech, a four seed. Five of the last 10 have been three seeds or lower. The lowest, I'll ask you a trivia question. Do you know the lowest seed to win the ACC conference tournament? Like seven? Six. 2004 yeah, Maryland, wild. who was not going to get in the tournament if they didn't win it. Um, I think they were oh, like seven right, yeah. and nine in the ACC. They ended up winning. 2017 Duke was a five seed. That was the second lowest. Pretty amazing that Georgia Tech is the defending champ. They were a four seed. How funny are some of these? You have Georgia Tech, Georgetown, Oregon State are some of these defending champs. They're like, yeah, have terrible. absolutely no chance uh, of winning. We rarely see that. Yeah, last year was a weird year. Um, so, yeah, let's. Uh, Duke's the favorite. And by the way, Georgia Tech's 150 to one. Don't bet them. Uh, yeah, Duke don't. is uh, <laughs> minus 130. They're the favorite. UNC, eight to one. Wake, 10 to one. Virginia Tech, 10 to one. Notre Dame, 10 to one. Miami, 11 to one. UVA 18 to one Q's 50 to one. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people. I bet, I bet there's going to be more futures on Q's than any other team. Yeah. I, I, I think you're right too. Yep. I agree. That's going to, that has and, to be like, I'm curious where the second shake out, but Q, everyone and their mother's going to bet Q's here. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, you get down to Florida state 60 to one Clemson 80 to one NC state a hundred to one. And you know, the, the ACC was just, it was a very down year in the conference and there were just so many teams didn't live up to expectations. Some of that was due to injuries. You know, Cuse has suffered some injuries. Florida State has suffered some injuries. Clemson dealt with some injuries. Yep. NC State has just not lived up to any of its expectations. Georgia Tech, a ton of injuries. So just across the board, you had a lot of kind of suffering teams throughout the year. When you first look at this bracket, what sticks out? Yeah, you're right. Like I was just starting with those first round matchups and teams littered with just multiple injury detonations, roster hemorrhaging, as we've seen Clemson, NC State, that first round match of Louisville, G Tech. Um, I mean, I don't know why you'd bet into those games. I mean, that just feels like the two of the biggest whack-a-mole games that that possibly exist. And then obviously any game involving Pitt is a who the heck knows what you're getting. I from a futures perspective, the two I like the best, although I don't love them, to be honest, is Virginia Tech and Virginia, both the Virginia schools. Um for the predominant reason being they both avoid Duke's side of the bracket. They're on the bottom half with Notre Dame lurking for Virginia Tech if they win that first game. And then Virginia um, with the matchup against UNC if they win their first game, who I think is going to be a good fade potentially in that quarterfinals coming off the Duke win. Um, but, I mean, the price isn't great. Uh, plus 1700 plus uh, for Virginia, plus 1100 for Tech. It's sort of a tournament where you look at all the randomness that could occur and that should induce excitement to bet you know, with the high variance environment, but, but really, man, nothing feels strong for me from a future. Do you like anything here? Yeah. I, I personally was, and we'd even mentioned Louisville, all, all everything that they've dealt with. And yeah, uh, right. Exactly. You know, is, is Williams going to play? Is he not? Or did they quit? Did they have, they have Does he care? Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I do. You could, you could cross off all those teams to, you know, 10 through 14. Um, yep, they're not winning this. So they would have to win five games in five days. So, yeah, I think that, you know, could Duke, the problem is Florida State is just decimated and Syracuse, you know, some of their injuries in the interior have, and that defense is just not the same. And they no. got destroyed by Duke in both games. Now you're going to have to play angry Duke off that Carolina loss. So I, I kind of just cross off both the eight and nine here, Florida State and Syracuse. Agree. Um, if you're a Syracuse fan or you want to have fun, sure. To throw some Duke, pocket change on it. D- but, Duke uh, is like, Duke is built to, destroy cues like the way yep. those like just what they're shooting and with those like you know, ben carroll kind of being a trigger man i think they roll cues for the third consecutive time this season so yeah i would not touch cues this is like the one year where i think cues does not have value yeah and florida state's playing a little better um of like yeah. notre dame to close the year i mean they so they, they could beat syracuse is what i'm saying um so yeah so then i go down you know wake forest miami um i think that they're probably priced right miami did beat duke, duke yeah and Wake Cameron, forest yeah. came close um so yeah i think that you know with duke losing to carolina here they're clearly the best team overall in the conference um i don't i'm avoiding the top half of the bracket so i think the the focus is on the bottom half as you alluded to and 
you know, if you look at bracket matrix right now, like Duke is safely in, they're like a two. And then it's like Wake, Carolina. I think Carolina is yeah. now safely in, but they're te- projected as tens. Miami right. better projected as 11s. Like you're getting a bunch of bubble teams very, here. Yeah. Very dicey. And then you have Virginia Tech, which is really close. And then Virginia, which is uh, probably has to win it or go on a deep run. And they probably got to get to the final. But these games are going to mean a lot to Virginia and Virginia Tech. But they're, I mean, Carolina and Notre Dame, it's not like they're safely in. But I do think that North Carolina might be a little bit of a lull. You're playing Virginia after that Duke win. So can Virginia kind of catch Carolina sleeping and then open up the bottom half of that bracket? Um, you know, because I do think Virginia Tech can beat Notre Dame. The team yep, could shoot the lights out. And that's kind of what you want with a dog. I wish the price was a little better, but that's the team that I had circled across the board was Virginia Tech. I don't hate Virginia either because they're kind of based on each other. Like I think Virginia Tech, you know, you're kind of hoping that Carolina gets knocked out by Virginia. So there's some correlation there. Um, yeah, exactly. Two. So um, yeah, I, I had the same two circled as you. It's the two Virginia schools uh, in desperation mode outside of the Duke half the bracket. And then, you know, like Virginia Tech's playing Clemson and NC state, Virginia's playing Louisville or Georgia Tech. I, just don't see really big upset potential um, in that first game, which helps. They still would have to win four games in four days. Yeah. That's um, the issue with Virginia schools, right? Like you kind of want to, we just talked about how it's important to you want to focus on the higher seed just because of the way the bracket's set up. It's just tough to win four games in four days, even if you're coming out of that second round, uh, which kind of goes back to maybe Duke's actually the best bet here. Um, I don't know. I've gone, I've waffled. Clearly there's no strong bets here for me in this field. It's worth mentioning that I looked at the splits the last, uh, six years favorites are 41 and 29 with a 1.5 average cover margin in this tournament. So I think it kind of shows how the, uh, the back-to-backs, the back-to-back-to-backs, uh, take a toll as you advance later in this, in this field and you get a pretty strong edge, not priced into the markets for the favorites. Yeah. And Virginia, if you look at Virginia, I mean, if Virginia, if Virginia does get to Virginia Tech, uh, you know the game's going to be like 54-53. Um, yeah. And that's just how it's going to be when those two teams play. Virginia has no bench whatsoever, the 351st in bench minutes. But they play at the slowest tempo in the country, which helps, right? Limited possessions. They're not going up and down the court. So that helps a little bit. Virginia it's Tech, kind of, yeah. same thing. No bench, play really slow. So they're you know limiting possessions. Um, it'll still be tough, but it's not like it's a team – you know, like uh, a St. John's it's, you know, just your legs might give out still might, and, but it helps that they play so slow. And Cuse has that formula too, right? And that's how Bayheim has been able to make a killing in March, despite not having a deep bench, right? I think the zone, the way they play allows you to conserve legs and it sort of diminishes the importance of depth, especially in this, in this field. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, with, and Virginia Tech, well, the top five in the country in three-point shooting, they're going to shoot a lot of threes. So, yeah, that's that's one thing that I do like about them here. Um, it's, it, you know, if it, it's odd because Virginia, you know, I, the, well, back, going back to Cuse first, you mentioned tourney setting success. That's why a lot of people are going to fall in love with Cuse and the whole narrative, like Cuse just finds a way to get into the tournament. This is their only path. But yeah. part of the reason they've had success – in tournament settings, specifically in the NCAA tournament, when you're when teams are playing them that aren't familiar with their defensive scheme, is that quick turnarounds, not familiar with the zone. But this zone is just not anything to write no, home about. It it's it's not a downy soft zone. zone. So it's not yeah. like that's working in their favor here. Um, now, thoughts on overall thoughts on Carolina, who's a really tough team to figure out. But they closed the year strong. I mean, they had to be they had to go to overtime against Syracuse. Um, you know, they didn't look great against Louisville and NC State, but they have won. They, they won at Virginia Tech. It's just a really inconsistent team. They lost a pit at home the game before that, but they did close the year with five straight wins, including a huge road win at Duke. Is this a team that you think has potential to make a run uh, in March? Have you, have you kind of changed your tune on them based on Saturday? Or do you think that was just like one game, weird circumstances, like all the hype and that worked, maybe that worked against Duke? What are your thoughts on the Heels? I gave him partial credit. Um, so maybe it's my Duke homerism speaking through the, the airwaves there, but it's very I big of you. Very big yeah. Of thank you. you. Partial I'm the bigger, I'm, I'm the bigger man here. Um, but yeah, Hey, Tar Heel fans, I, your team's legit. Like we've been waiting to see it all season. The question is, can you defend at a high level consistently? That's been the whole bugaboo 
And we've seen stretches. Again, I think there's been lulls within that last five game um, winning streak. I think they've been aided by some favorable shooting luck there, but it's a team that can defend, right? Like it's not a very physical team or an overly athletic team, but it's athletic enough. It's long enough with guys like, uh, you know, with leaky black. And I mean, they have pieces to defend and, uh, and get key stops when they have to. So, yeah. And also look back at the historicals, UNC 12 and four against the spread in this tournament the last six years. So um, I know it's a new coach. I don't like looking a lot at those historicals with a new regime in place, but, uh, but I think it's worth noting that this team just UNC typically and Duke too plays very well here uh, in the SEC tournament. Was it though the whole narrative though, for a while that like what Roy Williams doesn't care about the, the ACC tournament. That's what I thought too. But like his splits are, have been good the last few years. Um, like it used yeah. to be called the, uh, I think Duke fans potentially called the Duke invitational for a while, but um, I mean, they've been good. I think they're eight and five last six years, strong cover margin. So yeah, I mean, coach K I think has a good, feel for how to maneuver this type of tournament same with jimmy Beheim, right i mean he's we just talked about why they've been so good but without jesse edwards and, and benny williams up front i think that's that's a hard stay away yeah yeah i mean carolina just forces absolutely no turnovers whatsoever so teams aren't going to cough it up but they don't foul that's those two things kind of go hand in hand and they're going to clean up your misses so if you're their second in the nation in defensive rebounding percentage so if you're having an off day um it's it's going to be tough sledding Okay, they so make you beat them. Gonna yeah, they, they make yep. you beat them. I think that's, you know, somewhat admirable, right? It's sometimes a little bit too soft, a little too, they give you too much. But I mean, I think yep. that's a, at least it's a repeatable blueprint, I guess, defensively. Yeah, yeah. Still questions on the perimeter. Um, if, yeah, do you have a, a target? One of these, I mean, the first round games are, are disgusting and a lot of uncertainty. Pitt, BC, Clemson, NC State, Louisville, Georgia Tech. Do you have anything there or do you have a potential... You know, we also have Florida State Syracuse, which is a second round game on Wednesday. Do you have uh, a matchup that you might be circling from a betting perspective or a potential matchup down the line? Is it Virginia Tech against Notre Dame? Um, is it somewhere else? What, what are your thoughts there? No, I'm with you. I don't really have a great feel for the sides here. I What I do like is I might blindly bet all of these first round totals. Um, since 2016, 42 and 30 to the over in the ACC tournament. But you look at 2018, the last time this was held in Barclays, uh, a venue I feel like we may not associate with like being a, a shooter's paradise, right? It's like a more of a cavernous NBA type arena. But it's in, in 2018, though, nine and five to the over with a whopping seven point average uh, cover margin to the over. Um, I know a lot of these teams play well for, for like buying into that dynamic. I think there's a lot of good over teams in that first matchup. We've seen these first round overs play well so far. And kind of tournament, so that's kind of my angle there. I have no feel like you on the sides. I'll probably just do a small sprinkle on all of those, like I said, those opening round, um, and then the first round overs into Wednesday, uh, excluding the back to back. So just Florida State, Syracuse on Wednesday, and then those three first round on Tuesday. Yeah, Louisville's they're they're hard to feel like which who's going to show up, uh, who's going to play, who's going to not be dressed, and um, I, I might dig into some to Clemson. NC State. I, I don't. I mean, maybe this is a fresh start for NC State, and they can. I don't know. Think that they can make win a couple games. I mean, if they beat Clemson, I, I, you know, if you beat Clemson, it's not impossible. They can't play. They beat Virginia Tech and then Notre Dame. The problem is the team just it just doesn't defend. Um, no, it doesn't. I watch yeah. NC State. I mean, man, they are absolutely miserable defensively. Um, they also had a just a massive injury uh, early in the season losing Manny Bates. And I think that just changed the complexion of that team throughout, but uh, yeah, the, no offense is, is, the offense is can score, um, but the, the defense is uh, impoverished to say the least, but I might dig into that one. Um, but I, I agree with you. I think that from a futures perspective, it's Virginia tech or Virginia. If you want to grind it out with Virginia, um, God, look, they beat Duke. They played Duke tough twice they're going to be in like the, the two things that like these are going to be low possession games virginia tech shoots a lot of threes they're going to be in every game um which which you like and they're going to be desperate they're well coached so and they're in the bottom half of the duke so if you want to go both i say go for it if you like if you prefer one to the other um then take a shot i think that's where the value is not, not them. I was hoping for a little better lines, but um, yeah, I, I agree. The prices here didn't stick out. I'm with you. They're, they're not great prices, but I think those are the two best that are available. 